Hello, you're back with Dave and Tim at the Single Malt Review as we have our first recording session in quite a few months. Oh, what seems like absolutely mm. ages. You almost got to see me with some of the longest hair I've had in years. But no, you missed it. You missed it by a weekend. So just have to wait another few years to have that opportunity again. But mm. that's not what's important. What's important is, as usual, whiskey. We are back on the job. Um, not that you've been deprived of content, mm. I've been trickling things up, but we should have a wee bit more, a um, bit better cadence for you the uh, next few weeks as we really dig into this stuff here. Mm. But we're going to warm up here, first whiskey of the day, with this funny old one, which is new to me. It's the Loch Lomond. Notice I'm not saying Loch Lomond anymore, I've learned <laughs> my lesson there. All you commenters, you won that war, I'm going to Thank say you, Loch Internet. Lomond now. Um, it's the blended from, as you might have guessed, Loch Lomond. And I didn't know they made a straight up blended. Mm. They do a grain, which is curiously, well, it's the most technical grain out there because it's mm. made of malt, um, made of malt. Uh, they just put it through their column still, mm. um, which sounds like a very expensive way of making grain whiskey if you ask me, but um, who really knows? This one, um, I was not able to find out in my scant few minutes of research before we started whether uh, it's entirely a Loch Lomond product because they do make plenty of grain grain um, at that distillery. So they could have put this together all by themselves and I think chances are that's what is going it on It does here. seem likely. So it's curious. A single sourced blended whiskey. Yeah. Um, I mean, maybe wrong, maybe they may bring in grain from um, a more of an industrial source, but they have all the tools there to mm. put this together themselves if they want to, and it has a distinctly, as we will find out, a distinctly um, Loch Lomondy character to yeah. it. It's got lots of that medicinal sort of oddness to it, mm -hmm. and quite a bit, and this is what surprised me, quite a bit of peat. Mm. Doesn't tell you anywhere on the label, but this is a peated blend, um, much the way that, say, a Walker Black is a peated blend. Um, in fact, I don't think Johnny Walker Black tells you it's a peated blend either, but mm. it's a bit more well known. But yeah, this one, this one is, it's odd. I was expecting something a lot more conventional because, oh, another good bit of info here, this is dirt cheap. This mm. is, um, if this was a bigger bottle, this would be an out and out budget whiskey. You know, your Dewars, your Bells, um, it would be on that sort of, mm. that sort of level. Um, so, but for the, but for the little bit of lack of volume, this was one of the cheapest whiskies I've bought in a, a very long time, so pretty get, pleased with it, really. I get the feeling this is probably designed to appeal to a wider, possibly mass market. It is 40% mm. ABV, coloured, chill filtered, no age statement. Uh, minimal info here, but it's been married in recharred oak casks, or most what hasn't usually. And it, they tell us he enjoyed straight, over ice, or with water. So clearly it's meant to be a versatile, easy drinking, anyone can get in the whiskey, yeah. not a boutique, snobby high-end uh, connoisseur-only fare. Recommended to be drunk in liquid form mm. um, for internal use only. Uh, yeah, uh, so nothing, yeah. nothing, nothing really, um, no, no extra info on mm. the bottle whatsoever. So, um, but honestly, I think fair enough. I've never had a disappointing Loch Lomond. Yeah. So something that's designed to be as accessible as possible, sure, it should be a, I'm thinking, a fun and easy to get into dram. Yeah. And you'll have to see how this suits you, but I don't think that it's going to change this trend. I think this mm. one's really rather good. Neat. Um, considering considering its price category. So Ooh. yeah, you get that that peat is pretty straight away and yeah. that kind of that medicinal cough droppy kind of a thing that's all over Loch Lomond whiskey mm. and almost nowhere else. It's yeah. very unique. Um ooh, gee. Neighbour just scared me with a hose. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. A view of the garden fence from where we're filming, so any shenanigans I next door. An alarming, an alarming sight. He <laughs> stopped now. That's all right. That's all right. The whiskey is quite cold. It's been chilly in here today. It is literally middle of winter as we record oh, this. Yeah, so the whiskey's getting to warm up. But aside from that peat, I'm getting there's a bit of orange oil. Mm, mm, there's a bit of bit of confectionery, so some candied zest. There's almonds in here as well. Lots and lots oh. of almond, like sweet almond oil as well. I'm getting a hint of marzipan, yeah. yeah. Hmm, there's quite a bit going on. I'm going to give it a little more warmth off my hopefully warmer human hands. Yeah, I, I turned the heater off because it was being noisy, mm. but it is it is wickedly cold today. Mm -hmm. This is this is by far this may be this may be in the fullness of time the coldest day we have this year. Mm. It froze well hard this morning. New Zealand is not big on insulation or central heating, so while this is a fine house, it doesn't get quite as toasty as we expect you folks are used to mm. in Europe or the UK or North America. Mm. So, 
it's a weird it's a weird whiskey to describe it's sort of all over the place mm. um, and it changes first it's quite sort of sweet and clean and crisp and then the peat is just suddenly there and when you're not expecting it, it there can be quite a it can be quite a confusing kind of a yeah thing to happen and then you get that weird medicinal stuff and then the peat kind of returns for the finish mm. it feels a bit light and thin at first probably because of that restrained 40 percent abv but there's still quite a bit of flavor going on there mm. and over time it blossoms into this kind of floral earl grey bitterness it's got a good hit of that bergamot orange which i'm quite liking there's a yeah definitely a recurring citrus theme going on here not the sweet lemon pie kind of citrus though yeah it's um if I didn't know, if the bottle had not explicitly told me that this was a blended Scotch whiskey, I would have had a very, very hard time mm. telling this apart from a young blended malt. It has a certain strain mm. of what I associate in my mind with grain whiskey. Uh, it's hard to like articulate very clearly, but it's, it's a certain sharpness, a clear-cut medicinal, um, mm. almost chemical aspect. Um, not that we have the option, but it would be really interesting to side by side this one with the Loch Lomond single grain, mm. um, because if that is what they've used, then you should be able to pull sort of some similarities um, out of this one. But um, that's long, long, long gone. Though you can um, you can watch our video on it um, if you go and dredge that one up. I know this one is easy to drink, and I imagine it'd be very easy to mix as well. This could be a very mm. versatile dram. It could. It is. I mean, it goes well with ice. Um, yeah. I think, given it's a complex one, I've been having this one just as it comes because it's at forty percent. It doesn't have a lot of rope. Um, mm. Once it starts getting diluted, it can drown out pretty fast. And it's a weird one for mixing because of mm. that peat. Um, a lot of sort of blended scotches they are pretty versatile for mixing yeah. old fashions or whatever like that. Put some put some peel in there, get a wee bit of sweetness going. That all changes once you've got any peat in there, mm. um, because you make an old fashioned and there's peat in there. That's a ooh, that's a that's a peculiar okay. drink you've just made. I was just thinking that the kind of orange zest and orange oil yeah. component would make a great addition to an old fashioned, but I've never had an old fashioned with a peat. Yeah, the old fashioned with peat it, so. it doesn't this it does it goes a bit wrong. Um, they're right. such a sweet kind of a desserty cocktail mm. that you'd have to kind of you'd have to rethink how you were making it. Not saying it couldn't happen, okay. but you would have to you'd have to come at it from the outside uh, rather than the conventional. Maybe bun into a whiskey sour or something else. I don't know. I think whiskey sour, sour you'd be you'd be more um, you'd be more in the line there. The whiskey sour, especially because there's lots of there's lemon juice in there mm. as well. So the, the citrusy thing might work for you. Yeah. Might work for you there. But I mean, I have had drinkable lemon sours made out of pure Ardbeg ten year olds. Wow. Um, I mean, it was a stretch, but they were drinkable. <laughs> so it it can be done. There are cocktails mm. you can. Um, make with peaty whiskey, even if it's very, very peaty. But yeah, you do have to think quite differently about what you're um, what you're about to do. Well, I have to say, it seems mm. that Loch Lomond have had the kind of sweet intersection of affordable, accessible, and good quality here. This is a good uh, meeting of the three. Yeah, um, I I really like this. This is not. I mean, it's it's a no edge statement budget blend. Um, it's not shooting for the shooting for the moon here, but what it is shooting for, I think it's hitting pretty squarely. Yeah, and points wise, it gets an eighty two. Mm. This is really nice stuff. Yeah, this is an easy eighty for me as well. Mm -hmm. It hits all the right notes. It is unpretentious. It's not aiming to be haute uh, spiritus cuisine, and it is doing a fine job of it. And it's not just another no statement blend. It's mm. got a unique twist, and it's all from Loch Lomond, we believe, uh, all their own goods. So I would say, if I mean, if any of this sounds interesting, seek them out, yeah. um, because it was a very, very low, uh, low investment to give it a go. And um, as for something to compare it to, it's a bit like, imagine if Monkey Shoulder had a bit of peat in it, um, and a little bit of grain. Uh, it's not a very good, not a very mm. good comparison, is it? Because um, I've just described every whiskey <laughs> on the planet. Um, mm. It's it is it's quite of its own thing, but it's very for a blend. It's very single malty. It's very it has a lot of malt energy coming off it that most other no age statement budget blends do not. So I think that's probably the best in a nutshell description we can we can really give it. But uh, a tremendous warm up whiskey, yeah. if uh, nothing else. So now that uh, now that the tongues are lit up. Um, we can start hitting some of the more serious stuff, and goodness, we have got some serious whiskies on the table today. Mm. Whoa. It's going to be a march, but we'll get there. All right, Slanger, stick around.